So, I don't have enough fuel over here at all, and I need to get some fuel to it. So, I'm going to more or less get these things back into the orbit that I had, or the, um, the angle that they were at, when I was launching my initial mission, which is about 45 degrees, it's like 44. So... Uh, I don't know. Is there good? Okay, that's... If that's 90... Yeah, that, that looks pretty good. Okay, cool. So let's launch a thing. Let's go back. And let's go back to the space center and let's launch a thing. I made a thing, by the way. Um, at least I think I still have the thing somewhere. Maybe I don't. But the point is, I am going to quickly make a thing if I don't have a thing. No, I don't have a thing. Oh. That was a thing, though. Yeah, that was an experiment that <laughs> should never be repeated. But anyway. Let's make a thing. Let's make a refueler majig. R for re fueler majig mark two. I guess I did make a thing. So this is a thing. It is a thing that is about that big. It is a thing that is about that big. And it has a big thing of fuel, and it has things that push and a thing that grabs. Hopefully that will be okay. Let's launch it. Let's see what happens when we throw it into space. Okay, so we have a thing and the thing bounces. Just a little bit, not too much, just a little bit. And we do that, and we do that, and we do that, and then it goes up. Since he's doing that, we might as well do this. Yep. Okay, well, at this point, I fucked up. because I was supposed to ditch the lower stage earlier, but I think I should have enough Delta V to spin this fucker back around and land the three tanks on the ground. If I just stage it correctly, it should be fine. At any rate. Let's circularize this orbit a bit, shall we? So it's a circular orbit. Uh, but we still got a bunch of fuel in here. And this is full, and this is full. I don't want to ditch these because they're extra thrust. So what I'm thinking... What I'm thinking is that this all here... Well it can still redirect itself back and crash into the planet, and this can go on, using this as the initial boost stage. So let's try it out. Um, we need to set ourselves up on an exit burn, and the planet is orbiting this way. And Duna's there, and we want to burn, like, here in our orbit, which is pretty good, all things considered. Yeah. Okay, 
just go on it like that. Uh, there. That should be pretty good. So let's get ourselves set. Let's drag that out. Yep. And then what? Wow, that's pretty close. Set that target. Okay. I hope this works. I don't know if it's going to work, but I hope it does. Ah, oh, that's true. I've still got a whole shit ton of SAS up here. This thing actually works better. Hmm. This thing works better this way. That's kind of awesome. Okay. The additional three SAS up in the front here provide a lot more control for spinning this thing around. And the staging is perfectly correct for dropping them if I'm launching super heavy stuff anyway into orbit. So either way, this launch platform is pretty darn solid. That is a pretty gosh darn good launch stage, if you ask me. Pretty darn good indeed. Well, my friend, you've served as well will fly above Kerbin. High above Kerbin. Shall you go? And then you're gonna come on down. Here we come at the planet itself. Well, let's orient ourselves. And let's burn like crazy pants. <laughs> Towards the space center. Because why the F not? Yeah, this is pretty sweet. <laughs> My version of the SpaceX system. This is my Falcon 9 for you. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, almost out of fuel. Almost out of fuel. There we go. That's it. That's us. Our course is set. We're not going to make it, but that's great. <laughs> oh, that's great. That couldn't have worked out better. Awesome. Well, that was a great stage. This is a wonderful launch stage. I'm loving this shit. I'm loving this shit. Yep. Not 
too shabby. <laughs> anyway. Let's get to this guy. Is this guy, this guy right here, he's got some course corrections to make pretty soon. That's pretty darn good. Alright, we got a ways to go. We're gonna make it. Plenty of fuel. Now granted, course correction. Fairly significant, but... We're not here to make it here and back, we're just here to refuel something. We're still gonna bring a decent amount of fuel over uh, to our stranded spacecraft. What am I even doing? thousand kilometers that can be fixed pretty good on fuel okay cool well let's uh, save that let's zoom out Okay, now that's what I'm talking about. A nice correction burn of 5 meters per second. And now, now we can check the actual rendezvous itself. And it's just about time to burn. Yeah, right about here, anyway. Not perfect. What did it get us? Oof. That is what they call close. <laughs> well, let's try. Well, I have to come from beneath. It's the only way that this is going to work. All right, let's reload it. Let's get ourselves set from beneath. So here we go, getting myself lined up to come in to do. Now this is present me, by the way, um, and present me is going to be coming back another four times at this point. The reason being, I have three separate videos that I'm compiled into this one. Um, here we come in, doing my approach, whatever. Um, anyway, I had to put all these three together because I wanted to kind of have like a, the whole mission combined into one, 
rather than uh, rather than worrying about cutting up three different videos and you have to watch three different videos to get the whole thing. So that's kind of why the runtime's so long on this 40 minutes. Granted, it's a little bit long, but keep in mind this is three separate gameplay videos all concatenated into one. And if you're wondering why I'm excited in the next clip, it's because it's a brand new video. So yeah, that's basically that, I guess. So yeah, um, just thinking about all the glorious science that I'm going to bring back. The fact that I will have finally unlocked the entire tech tree, very pleasing. And I think I'm going to postpone my, uh, my jewel mission. Um, I mean, not for any particular reason. I just think that, you know, rendezvousing with the planet and, you know, getting into atmosphere and whatnot. Basically, what I want to do is I want to do something really challenging, and I want to test out um, making a space plane. Uh, and I'll make a transfer vehicle for it as well, but I want to make a space plane and go to EVE and I want to land on EVE with the space plane and take off from EVE with the space plane Because that would be awesome uh, But I'm gonna need all of the advanced parts and stuff to do it so Yeah We'll do it We will do it do it because because we can but mostly for awesome because why else would you do something if not for awesome wouldn't that's the answer so yeah uh, Eve mission I think would be um, a really big challenge because uh, it's, it's dead easy to land on Eve really really easy to land on Eve just because you've got such a thick atmosphere it's actually thicker than Kerbin's um, oh yeah, that's right. I had come up with an idea for Eve, and it wasn't a space plane. Although a space plane would be bows. But uh, the idea was like a um, like a lander system that was also rovable. It's like you'd have landing gears and stuff that you'd come down on, but then once you'd actually landed it, you'd retract the gears, and that would uh, allow your wheels to come out and and contact with the ground and then you could like rove that around a little bit and then launch it from a higher altitude because it's what you want to do on EVE apparently um, so I don't know I mean maybe maybe a space plane would be a cool idea for EVE it, it could be fun um, maybe it would be a better idea to go with um, like a like a lander I don't know I don't know I'm of two minds but one of my minds is a little bit more insistent than the other one, and that mind is telling me that a lander is definitely a more doable setup, and it also gives me the opportunity to make that new spaceship with the lander in the middle, um, as well as another lander that I'm going to use um, to land on. Pretty sure Eve has a moon called Gilly. I think it does. I'd have to check, and I'm not going to, because I'm still deorbiting things. Well, okay, not not deorbiting. That is, that is the wrong word. That is the exact, not what we want to do right now. But, but we are we are decreasing our apo apps, while attempting to maintain stable peri apps, which you know doesn't actually happen. But that's fine. Whatever. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. Don't judge the size of my peri apps. I think that was almost sexual. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so Eve will probably be the next mission, um, and then we'll do a massive jewel mission afterwards, because I'll have more experience at that point, and I'll hopefully have some better rocket designs and some better ideas of what I want to do. Um, I still like the idea of having a space plane on Eve, but I'm thinking it might just be like a one-way thing, where like I leave it on Eve with... Uh, robotic control or something and I don't ever plan on getting it back up maybe I'll put like some some docking ports on it or something so that one day I could theoretically you know attach the space plane to um, to a booster stage or something and and launch that back out but I'm thinking that it'd be cool um, to make like um, like a space plane that would come down and land and then I could bring it out to the water and I could turn it into like a water plane or something. I don't know. I don't know. 
Maybe I'll just make a boat and drop that on Eve, and that'll be fun. Who knows? Only, only the gods. Only the gods and the powers that be truly know and can fathom the wonders of the Kerbal universe. Or, or maybe the game devs. That's it's also a distinct possibility that they might know something. Um, maybe. Wow, I like to ramble. Um, okay, so still with, with the orbit stuff. And we've got like three kilometers just to bring it down. Let's bring it down, guys. Let's just bring it down. Okay. But again, this is a tedious and painful process, as, as you have borne witness to. Um, but it is exceptionally worthwhile because I am not consuming any fuel in this process. I am merely... I am merely dropping my... I'm dropping my apoaps without using any fuel, and as a result, I am maintaining said the fuel in order to resupply my ship. Which, you know, is what I was kind of trying to do with the spaceship in the first place, but then that didn't happen, because I'm a dumb and I don't know how to do orbital insertions into a solar, a planetary system. Yes. Basically, I don't know how to aero break after transfer from one planetary system to another. Things to work on for the future. I really, really, really love that red haze. <coughs> It just looks so cool. It just looks so damn cool. Oh my god, I love it. How are we doing here? We are under three kilometers. And... 3,000 kilometers. Because math. Um, the periaps is still dropping, but it's not too bad. So we're we're getting there. This is this is good. This is good for us. We we're, we're happy with this. This is a good thing. We like we like this thing. Um extend the panels. And since this is taking a little while, and I should probably maybe save? Maybe save a little bit. Little bit with the saving. We kind of did the quick save. Okay, we did the quick save. We did it. Let's go fast. Okay, good stuff. Um, yeah. So uh, there's more of this to come. <laughs> um, you can't really make this stuff interesting. This is going around in circles. It's not the most impressive or intriguing of feats here, especially considering that it requires exactly no input on my part aside from slowing speeding time and, and retracting and extending the panels, which, you know, first time, kind of amusing, you know, a little bit of an exercise. Second time, not, not the best of things that I could be doing with myself, but it's necessary. Third time, kind of sick of it, let's be honest. Fourth time, really don't feel like doing this anymore, and then it just got worse. Um, and I can't remember what time this is, but I know it's worse than the time before. And only slightly better than the time to come. Which is not much comfort. Tear. Um... Anyway, like I said, this is what you get for poor planning. You have to um, <laughs> you have to compensate for it because unfortunately we can't let these guys die because I promised myself that I wouldn't let a Kerbin die. Now, obviously, a few have died in the course of making this. Um, not that many though, but a few. Um, but I always have a load back, and even if it's hours of gameplay that I'm losing, I have to go back and pick up from where all those Kerbins were alive. Kind of like the quantum universe in a way, you know? How every possible action occurs at any given moment in time, thus creating a multitude of different realities that exist independent of one another. And so whenever you restart the game, you've created a brand new reality with different choices involved in the previous run. 
I'm sure the analogy works somehow. Anyway. Yep, so, uh, well, <laughs> present me again, and I think I definitely stamped my nerd card on that one, you know, orbital dynamics and quantum theory. Pretty sure I got a new stamp for that, maybe a gold star, we're not sure. Anyway, uh, like I was saying before, I could have made this into two videos, I suppose, using the first and the second uh, as one, and then the third one as the second video, but I decided not to, and in case you were wondering, this is roughly seven and a half hours of gameplay footage that I've managed to squeeze into 40 minutes, which I think is pretty good. At any rate, um, I'm about to come up to finalize my Apo apps and my Perry apps as I spin around more and more and more and more arrow breaking here. Uh, more or less finalized that I have to adjust the Perry app slightly so that it doesn't drop too low and the Apo apps doesn't drop off too quickly, like I did when I first set up this mission. So, yeah, that's fun. Okay. Well, all there is to do is bring the Perry apps up a little bit. Gonna kinda have to do that. Because if I don't. I think I'm going to run this thing into the ground prematurely. We can't have that, can we? So yeah, here comes a quick burn, and this is just to raise my parry apps up slightly, uh, just to make sure that it's not too low, and so I don't have a repeat of the first mission with my spaceship where I nearly crashed into the planet while arriving at Duna. Um, and then I'm going to adjust my orbital inclination to more or less match up with my uh, with my spaceship in orbit, uh, so that I can do the rendezvous, just adjusting the ascending and the descending nodes there. And I'm also going to try fast forwarding within the tracking station itself. Now it turns out that when you're fast forwarding in the tracking station, atmospheric drag doesn't affect you, which might be useful later on down the line for rendezvousing two ships while in atmosphere. Well. We're almost there, kids. We're almost there. Just a little bit more spinning around the planet, and we have got ourselves the orbit that we want. So I'm just going to bring this on down, and uh, hopefully get an intersection at some point, and adjust based off of the intersection that I achieve. And that should be pretty much all that I need to worry about. I think. Um, of course, at this altitude, things take a lot of time, so I'll spare you that and speed things up. Alright. So, present me again, and uh, more or less as I was doing in that last little segment where I was adjusting the ascending and the descending nodes, uh, pretty much lining up the two orbits so that they overlap each other, right? Uh, so you could maybe just catch it there. Um, doing a little burn there as well, where the blue circle is kind of getting closer as far um, as the, the change in angle, I guess. Here's another burn here where I actually make the adjustment. But the, uh, the two circles need to overlap each other. Even though they're not the same size of circle, um, they can't be on an off angle from one another. So you can imagine two wheels side by side, they're parallel to each other, and that's kind of what you want to get here, is two circles that are at least parallel to each other, um, so that you're not flying off to one direction or another where you actually est establish the orbit. So we spin around here, I set up yet another node, and then we're going to do a little bit of a burn eh, right about here, and I think this is the last adjustment that I make. My nodes were at about like 0.2 degrees off or something like that, which is about as close as I could really get it. And it's it's close enough. Just checking that my uh, my periaps isn't too low and that I'm not going to get caught in the atmosphere. Spin around a couple times here, and then I make my final adjustment here for the actual rendezvous which is at about four kilometers, if I remember correctly. So I make that adjustment right there, and then I think we're just going to zoom ahead to where we actually uh, start to encounter the ship. So there you can see the ship just coming up below us, and I'll switch over to RCS and zoom myself in towards the ship. Now at this point, I try to actually get the ship on the first try, try to actually dock with the ship on the first try which with my grabber, and manage to push the ship away from me. Good job, Nick. Uh, and then eventually I get it and I refuel, but I make a mistake. Not too bad, all things considered. <laughs> 
especially with the midway muck up there. But hey, what are you gonna do? Okay, now you. And that, as they say, is the brave voyage of the Refueler Majig Mark II. The rest is history. So goodbye, my Kerbal friends. Go and meet your brother after some course corrections. I am very much tired now. But glad. Glad that they finally have the fuel that they need to get back home. I think. <laughs> Present me one last time, and incidentally, the mistake that I made was that I left fuel in those fuel pods just above the engines of the ship here. Uh, so I had to go back and transfer that off. But anyway, we're coming down towards Duna. The ship is about to explode any second now, and yeah. wasn't that fancy. Um, so I transmit off some science there, uh, crew reports and whatnot, and then I transfer over to my lander here, and I'm going to burn here to raise my apple apps. Now the reason that I'm doing this is that my ship, when it comes off of Duna and encounters Icon establishes an orbit, is going to be orbiting in the complete opposite direction to where the lander is, uh, to the way that the lander is orbiting. So at Apoaps here, I'm burning against the negative vector, so I'm burning against the velocity the ship already has to flip my orbit into the opposite direction, uh, which obviously will allow my uh, my spaceship to encounter this lander. And then I think my plan there was that, um, well, the lander's going to establish a circularized orbit, and then the ship's going to come over, and it will more or less establish the appropriate orbit relative to the lander. And once they're within close encounter range, I still have RCS on the lander itself to be able to actually do the rendezvous with the ship. Following that, obviously, we transfer over all the science, and then we can finally head on back out to Kerbin. So that's my orbit flipped, and I go back to the ship and create a transit uh, here, and I start to burn towards Ike, because that's what I need to do. So yeah. And that, in theory, should give us an encounter. An encounter with Ike. And our good friend Bob has been waiting in solitude for so very long now, waiting for his friends to come and join him. Don't worry, Bob. We're coming for you, buddy. We're gonna burn towards the planet, and somehow that will magically make us arrive at you. I still think it's a pretty good looking ship, all things considered. I just didn't pilot very well. But hey, these things happen. Burning inside of the atmosphere, too. This is freaking brilliant. It's gonna be one heck of a maneuver if I can somehow miraculously pull this bullshit off. Well, guys, off we go.
say goodbye to Duna. It's been quite the visit. It's time to go and meet your buddy over at Ike. Take it easy, Duna. It's been real. We'll come back sometime and visit. Please, dear God, tell me I've got this the right way. We have arrived at Ike, gentlemen. A friend is somewhere in orbit around us. find Bob soon. We're gonna use Bob's ship to get him on a better orbit with us. Then hopefully he has enough RCS to rendezvous with us. If he doesn't, then we'll adjust our orbit to match his, and then he can use his RCS to rendezvous with us. Okay. We now have a captured orbit. What we do with it, we will see in the future. But I'm thinking we can probably adjust this guy's orbit somehow, like off of this, maybe. I don't know figure some stuff out. Probably using this guy to start. So it might be better with him. Whatever. This is good enough for now. Alright. Done and done.